If you're a weightlifter and you've been lifting for a very long time, like I have, eventually you're gonna reach a point where you don't wanna do the snatch or clean and jerk. And when you do them, it almost grosses you out. We are going to be talking about what you should do when you reach that point. Because if you're a weightlifter, you're going to reach that point eventually. And if you pretend that you're not gonna reach that point, then it's just gonna get that much worse. So we are gonna go to the gym and figure that out. But I have some steps for you guys. So if you're feeling that way, don't worry about it. You're gonna be fine because I've been there probably 10 times and I've rebounded every single time. That's Grimace. <laughs> Madison almost dropped her. But before we go to the gym, I gotta show you guys something. So I've been using Gorilla Mode okay. for my pre-workout. And this stuff is good, but it feels kind of heavy in my stomach when I'm doing the Olympic lifts. I don't really like that feeling. Uh, if I'm doing like an upper body session, which I'm doing today, then I'll take that. But if you're doing the Olympic lifts, the Gorilla Mode Energy is literally the closest thing I've ever taken to Jack 3D. And I've said that before. Huh? You said that before. Because this was. And then this eclipsed that as far as being close to Jack 3D. That was good. But I'll show you guys the difference in the scoop size. Because that's like the big thing. I don't know if you guys remember Jack 3D, but that was about the size of the scoop. And I take two scoops of this and I am cracked for literally like six hours. So if you're doing a late night session, don't take that, take that. Gorilla Mode Nitric, stem free. But the difference in the scoop sizes on these is crazy. This is Gorilla Mode Energy. This is just Gorilla Mode. Two scoops of this sits in your stomach pretty heavy. Two scoops of this, you can barely feel it in your stomach. All you feel is the euphoric buzz of stimulants coursing through your body, making you feel like a god for a little longer than you want to, but that's fine. Maybe take it, then do some work afterwards or whatever it is that you do. Um, the stimulant that's in here, the N, the dimethylamine citrate that's in here is 375 milligrams for a full dose, and that's two scoops. And here, it's 350 and the caffeine in here for a full dose is 375 and here it's 350. So you get more stimulant, less other shit that you don't really need if you're doing a performance sport. So if you guys want to get absolutely cracked and you don't want to buy some sketchy shit off the black market, this is your best bet by a mile. And the link is in the bio description, Descript bio, bio descript. <laughs> Grimace was like, whoa. So I wear barbell apparel all the time. It's all I wear whenever I work out. And there is a sale going on right now. If you buy $100 worth of stuff from barbell apparel, which is a good idea, then you get a hoodie that's $90 for free. It'll be included in your package. And you might think, Dylan, why the fuck do I need a hoodie? It's 105 degrees in Austin right now. When it's not, you're gonna wish you had that hoodie. And you could have got it for free, but instead, you're gonna put it off and you're gonna spend $90 on that hoodie in three months when you could have just got it for free now. And that sale ends at the end of September. So get on it now, get yourself a free hoodie. Their stuff is top, top, top quality. So if you want something and you wanna wear something all the time, get something nice so you don't wear it twice and throw it away. Get some good shit. Barbellapparel.com slash dozer. Link is in the description. <laughs> all right. So getting back into training, or not getting back into training, burning out with training is one of the hardest things to deal with as an athlete because when you're a weightlifter, training and going to the gym every day kind of becomes part of your identity. And when that starts to not feel right and working hard starts to not feel good, it's kind of a mind fuck because you almost keep pushing until it does feel good again. And doing that, sometimes works out and when it doesn't it really doesn't work out and that's how most people end up quitting so if you're dreading going into the gym and training you need to put a plan out there to where you can re-enter and the first step in that plan 
is getting back on schedule, not skipping sessions, and making sure you get the consistency in your schedule back. And that can be tough if you're doing the Olympic lifts. So my best advice for anyone that is burnt out, that doesn't want to snatch or clean and jerk, that doesn't want to do Olympic weightlifting training sessions, is do a program that is very different from what you're used to and work out no longer than an hour. So go into the gym, do something that is bodybuilding, squats, something that you can just knock out, feel like you put some good work in, and then leave. And another thing you can do outside of that is don't be too strict with your recovery. Go out, have a few beers on the weekend. Don't worry, you can skip breakfast and just go into the gym and do the workout fasted. Don't lift for performance, just lift to get some good work in so you feel good. And then your brain's gonna start correlating hard work with feeling good about yourself because that's kind of why we get into weightlifting. And then we get so wrapped up in performance and if we don't perform well, we don't feel good. When we started out, it was, oh, I just did a weightlifting training session. I suck at weightlifting, but I went in there and I did it. It was fun. And then you start getting good, and it's, I went in there and did weightlifting. It sucked. I suck. I feel like shit. And that's kind of where the burnout starts to happen. So what I'm doing is I am building a program called the Dozer Weightlifting Off-Season Program. And this is for weightlifters that feel burnt out. It's just a month and you can run this over and over if you want to. You can run it until you feel motivated again. But Monday, Wednesday, Friday, it's squats and core. Tuesday, Thursday, it's upper body, just getting jacked. And I followed this program, or I didn't, it wasn't written then, but this is the same format of programming I used back in 2022, like early 2022. I was retired for two years and then I just started doing this just getting in the gym, banging out some workouts, getting out of the gym, and I started building momentum and started feeling really good, and then I got back into weightlifting and I PR'd pretty much everything. So Monday, Wednesday, Friday squats, Tuesday, Thursday, just upper body, getting jacked, getting a little pump, and getting out of the gym. And what this does, it makes work start to feel good again. If you're a weightlifter, you don't do this shit. So if you're going into the gym with the idea that, oh, I just have to get this work done, and you're not worried about being perfect with your workouts, it takes a huge load off and you start falling in love with the work rather than the results. And if you love the work, the results will come. But if you're obsessed with the results, the work's gonna feel like shit. So we're gonna run through one of the upper body days right now. Um, they're pretty quick. It's gonna take me 45 minutes to an hour. I'm gonna knock it out and then we're gonna get out of here. And I've been doing this recently because the lifts have honestly just, I haven't had a lot of motivation to do them to be completely transparent. And I started doing this and now I'm getting excited to come back into the gym. And that's how all this starts. So if you're feeling burnt out, the program is live. You're gonna see me go through one of the days now. And if what I said resonates with you at all, this is what you need. So go take a look. All right, let's go. All right, so the upper body days are almost always going to start with some sort of row and this is a pull down, but still it's a row variation. So and with it, what we're doing with that is just getting the shoulders ready to press, making sure the lats are warm and that kind of primes the shoulders. Whoa, whoa, the mic's magnetic and I almost got punched in the face by it. But yeah, we're just priming the shoulders, making sure the lats are nice and warm before we start any sort of pressing movements. So we'll do a vertical pull. Then after that, we'll do a vertical push. Then we'll go to a horizontal pull, like a row. And then we'll go to a horizontal push. And then we'll hit some sort of fly shoulder variation. And then we're just gonna blast our arms. And it's four to five sets of each. And you're just getting in work. You're getting a really good pump. You're gonna feel good about yourself. and. We're just creating this cycle in our brain to where you go to the gym, it feels good, you leave the gym, and you wanna go back and feel good again. All right, then we're going into our vertical push. Um, it's normally gonna be like dumbbell press, Arnold press, behind the neck, snatch grip press, behind the neck, military press. Um, we're just counteracting what we just did. And as you can tell, my shoulders are weak as fuck. 
So all this stuff that we're doing is correlating to the lifts. It's seen as bodybuilding, but it is a very direct carryover when you get back to the lifts. Um, when I did this in 2022, the main thing I noticed when I got back is my overhead strength and my pulling strength felt better than ever. And I think the main reason for that is just mindlessly doing tons of upper body stuff when before all the upper body stuff I would do would be in my accessories at the end of a workout when I didn't want to do it. So I'll just be getting through it. But now that we're prioritizing it, we can put more focus on it, focus on increasing weight throughout the program. I'm so fucking out of shape. And that's how we get strong. When you're putting all your focus on one exercise and paying close attention to the progress and the increases, that's how you start to increase strength and create that progress. But as weightlifters, we put that focus on what matters, the snatch and clean and jerk. So when you take time off of those lifts, you can put focus on this stuff and those gains really, really carry over. We're going straight into our horizontal pull after that. So it's always gonna be some row variation. Could be cable row, could be pen lay row, bent over row. Today we're doing single arm dumbbell row. And we're just even, we're priming those shoulders even more for what we're doing after this which is gonna be some sort of chest press. So it's really important that we make sure those shoulders are ready and activated before we start doing that shit. We're going into our horizontal push. This can be a bunch of different things, close grip bench, wide grip bench, normal bench. Dumbbell bench, incline dumbbell bench. It's gonna be a bunch of different stuff, but we're just gonna do incline dumbbell. I'm gonna use the 40s, because I'm a weak bitch and I need to talk to you guys while I do these. This is something weightlifters never do, ever. As a weightlifter, I've benched probably 10 times since I started. As you can tell, and building the shoulder and everything around the shoulder is very important for your shoulder health and it's overlooked. I remember I was at Worlds and I talked to Lesman, can't pronounce his last name, but he's for, uh, looks for Bar right now, he used to live for Columbia. He said the Colombian team benches every single week for shoulder health. So if you can do it without trying to big dick and max out every single time and focus on good movement and working the right shit, your shoulders are gonna like it, which is what we're doing on this program. You are gonna see this exercise a lot on this program. Um, it's the lateral raise. I did these like literally five times a week back in 2022 and it's the strongest my overhead position I ever felt. And this is something I really want to target because if you remember like a month and a half ago at Nationals, I couldn't hold shit over my head. As a matter of fact, everything I put over my head made its way back to the ground before I got a down signal. So these, I swear, help your overhead position in the snatch and the jerk substantially. And then at the end of the bodybuilding workout, we're always gonna do some sort of burnout with the arms. Today, we're doing 100 reps in the tricep push down and 100 reps in the bicep curl. And we're just sticking on this cable machine the whole time. I'm not gonna be too strict with these. You can do, you're gonna have options when you're on the program. You can do French press, you can do fucking kickbacks, you can do whatever you want. But it's essentially gonna be a bicep exercise plus a tricep exercise. We're just gonna burn it out. Having big arms is something I've never experienced. So maybe one day, if I run this program enough, I'll be able to see a little bump when I flex in the mirror. But we're just gonna burn out on these. Do 10 and 10 until I'm done.
So that's it. That workout took me like 45 minutes. I broke a good sweat. I feel like I got a lot of reps in, a lot of work in, and I just flew through it. And now afterwards I feel good. The work felt good. I'm not worried about how heavy, oh my God, how heavy anything felt. I'm just worried about the fact that I got the work done. And that's such a good habit to get into is focusing on the work itself, not as much the result. And this really teaches you to focus on the work and the results start coming in. Um, this is something that definitely works. I just went into the gym every day, knew what I had to do, went hard for 45 minutes to an hour, got out of there. It was a really nice change of pace. You don't need to get into the gym, lay around warming up for 45 minutes, do a two hour weightlifting workout, do your accessories, get home, and have to go straight to bed. It's like, we get in here, we just bang some shit out, get some really good work in, and we're done. So if you're looking for a good change of pace, and you want to feel happy to go into the gym again, you don't want to dread walking through those doors every single day, this is what you need. You're gonna get the legs strong, you're gonna get the upper body strong, you're gonna enjoy the work, and all the work you're putting in is gonna carry over to the lifts. That program is live right now. The link is in the description. Click on it, do it. It's a month long. If you wanna run it twice, go ahead. When you get, or when you buy it, it's a PDF, so you're able to download it, keep it. But for a lot of you guys, speaking as a weightlifter myself, I know a lot of you need this. And if you're feeling burnt out, don't ignore it. Act on it, do something about it, accept where you are, and you're gonna be really happy you did in a few months. But other than that, I will see you guys next week.